Africa is home to some 400,000 elephants, and Tanzania's herd is one of the continent's largest. But in what conservationists call a preventable tragedy, the population has plummeted. Some 90,000 Tanzanian elephants disappeared in the last decade as poachers decimated herds. The poaching is run by criminal gangs cashing in on demand for ivory goods across East Asia. Hong Kong is one of the big global centers for the ivory trade. Uh, in fact, it's the most ivory on sale in any city in the world is here in Hong Kong. More than 30,000 pieces of ivory are on sale in shops around the city. So it's always been a key hub and therefore a key driver of the poaching crisis in Africa. Ivory ornaments, jewelry and sculptures are priced in China, Japan and Vietnam, where buyers will pay thousands of dollars for pieces that show off status and wealth. In 1989, most countries agreed to a voluntary ban on trading new ivory products and for a time, poaching appeared to ease. But not all countries went along. As China's economy boomed in the last two decades, rising affluence created new demand. The consumers, many of them never heard of ivory before, but all of a sudden they saw their friends, family, wearing ivory and showing off and saying, you know, this, this ivory represents somehow represents status, represents that you've made it. Tanzania once was among a gang of eight countries considered scufflaws in efforts to fight poaching. More recently, it formed a task force to take on the poaching syndicates. One of its most notorious catches, the Ivory Queen. Yang Fenglan is a Chinese businesswoman who once described herself the best example of friendship between China and Tanzania. Now she faces 30 years in a Tanzanian prison. Prosecutors say she managed and financed a smuggling ring that sold more than 700 tasks over 14 years. Michael Landfrey's firm helped with the investigation that led to Yang's arrest in 2015. It's a very solid case, and, and, and uh, the file is, uh, is definitely a very big file. The reason is that, that, uh, that, that, that she was a sort of hub uh, linked to uh, networks of people uh, going for the ivory. Yang appeared an unlikely ivory kingpin. Born in Beijing, she came to Tanzania in the 1970s to translate Swahili for Chinese workers building a railway. In 1998, she opened a Chinese restaurant in the capital, Dar es Salaam. Local Chinese who knew Yang described her as warm-hearted. They also questioned why, two years after her arrest, the case hasn't gone to trial. Authorities have said little and declined to speak with VOA. But according to the Environmental Investigation Agency, a non-profit that exposes illegal wildlife trade, her case traces to 2013 when authorities raided a house in Dar es Salaam suburbs. There they found 706 elephant tusks, worth some $2.5 million, and arrested three Chinese men. The bust quickly led to the discovery of another 2.9 tons of tusks in the port of Zanzibar and eventually to the arrest of two Tanzanian men who named Yang as their buyer. Her indictment states that Yang confessed to have taken an active role by collecting, transporting, exporting, and selling government trophies. But Yang and her daughter, who also lives in Tanzania, deny the charges. Yang has spent more than two years in jail while her case is stalled. Alan Thornton leads the Environmental Investigation Agency. During the period Yang allegedly bought tasks, trafficking from southern Tanzania to China emerged as the single largest conduit for illegal ivory in the world, the EIA has reported. 
the investigative unit in Tanzania that brought the Ivory Queen to justice and to be prosecuted is highly respected, experienced uh, personnel. Um, and the indications of the kinds of evidence that implicate her uh, seem to be quite strong and very detailed. Beefed up enforcement is stopping poachers in some countries. This year, authorities busted trafficking and poaching rings in Ivory Coast and Gabon, which has lost 60% of its forest elephants in recent years. The biggest impact is from China's ban on ivory sales. It's a seismic shift following years of pressure and campaigning by former NBA star Yao Ming and other celebrity conservationists. This is a major historical achievement. Our understanding is that enforcement has been increasing across uh, China against illegal ivory trade. Uh, they have been making significant seizures. They have been taking down ivory syndicates. Black market ivory remains a problem, and ivory sales won't be illegal in Hong Kong for another five years. Hong Kong Customs is seizing an awful lot of ivory that is being smuggled into Hong Kong. So that raises a question as well. If that is coming into Hong Kong as an end destination, there has to be a vibrant market here. Across Africa, poaching festers thanks to corruption, porous borders, weak laws, and the threat of violence. In Tanzania last summer, prominent conservationist Wen Lauder with the non-profit Palms Foundation USA was assassinated in a taxi in Dar es Salaam. Lauder had worked closely with the Tanzanian task force on the Ivory Queen case. The motive for the shooting remains under investigation. The criminal syndicates behind the trade now are far more ruthless and violent than they were, say, in the time leading up to the 1989 ivory ban. Uh, these syndicates don't just trade in ivory, uh, it can be heroin, uh, it can be uh, people trafficking, sex trafficking, all kinds of atrocious uh, trades and activities, but these are extremely dangerous uh, and violent people and they have a lot of political protection in different places. Ivory prices fell after China's historic sales ban, but the criminal syndicates haven't gone away.